Hello, welcome, welcome. My name is Magdalene Janet. If you're new, welcome to the fam. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because we're always here. Having a good time and covering on TikTok and Instagram because I'm there daily. And of course, welcome back to the oldies for goodies. As you can see, we're in a new setup. Not really. I just moved everything forward in front of the window. We are close, personal. I have nothing on my face. My lips look dry. And you guys been wanting this video for a very, very, very long time. You always ask me what skincare I use for makeup up how do i skin prep i do have oily skin i don't have sensitive skin so just fyi let's say i just got out of the shower technically i did but i did comb my hair and i moved all this my face is a little wet i always go in with some rose water this one's from amazon and we're gonna act like this is like my water anytime i go to the gym i spray this on and i head out i don't wash my face with soap if i don't go to the gym i don't wash my face in the morning i just put water on it because the skincare i use the previous evening it's still in there and i just feel like my skin is so much more supple when i'm not using actual face wash of course you're gonna get all your crusties out or if you drool i would say wash your face but now that's a little bit wet look i got my skincare bucket here i'm gonna get my snail mucin this is the essence this goes first onto your wet face and you see it's nice and sticky we're gonna go all over i'm not gonna touch my neck because it's breaking out so i just put oil on it but usually bring it down your neck we're gonna let this dry down you always want to let your skincare dry down i always tell you but now i can show you while this is drying down we can move on to eye cream i'm gonna use the belief it's my favorite favorite one it moistens up this area and it plumps it we're gonna do this motion i always do my skincare before any any makeup this is also going to be makeup prep see we got some hydration just because you have oily skin it does not mean you don't need hydration in the meantime so i'm not looking at my dry lips i'm gonna get some i like plumping glosses or you can just use andy you know i love i love me some andy we can kind of put some on right, we got our lips right right skin prep is key for your skin obviously also for your makeup to sit well onto the skin by the way everything will be tagged and linked down below i tag it you'll see all the products here as the video is going and take your notebook and pencils out because class is in session i'm putting my teaching hat on i'm gonna disregard those boxes right there because i need to throw them out are we dry down yep it's bouncy skin rejuvenating system serum from philosophy this helps with some hydration to the skin let maybe a couple of minutes to dry down could already see like the suppleness that the skin already has while this is drying down i always go with a second eye cream i love this bobby brown one because it's super hydrating i really want great hydration in my under eye areas because that's the area that is the driest on my face although i have oily skin my eyes tend to dry up and you know how much i love powder so when you put creams powders you want to have a good bit so they don't look super crepey and scrapey. I always recommend an eye cream. It's gonna help like that suppleness. It's gonna help your under eyes look hydrated and it sounds gimmicky. It's true. Anytime I don't wear eye cream when I'm like going hiking or something, I just look, I didn't drink my water, you know? You know, while we wait, I'm gonna use my Lumify. I love these eye drops. They help with redness. I always try to be a multitasker just because this could take a lot of time and we, we're all really busy. While I wait, I'm gonna get some jojoba oil. It's linked on my Amazon storefront. I put it on my neck. Lately, my neck's been breaking out. I don't know what it is, but I do know I put it like in my ears too. It's so weird. The bottom of my ears right here it dries up too. And this started happening last summer. We're going with vitamin C. Vitamin C helps with brightness and it helps with dark spots. I like this. This one from Kiehl's, I just get that much. Kind of stings a little bit. Add it here, again, let that dry down. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna go get the makeup I'm going to use. So you know, we can be a little efficient. It's been about two minutes. My favorite moisturizer is this it cosmetics gel moisturizer because i do have oily skin i find that gel moisturizer moisturizers are the best for our type of skin i've been also using this belief moisturizer it's a little bit thicker but when you blend it out it turns into like a very lightweight moisturizer this is great and then i recently started using this water cream from laneige it's literally a water cream it's a gel and a cream moisturizer in one it works very well also i don't like digging my my nail in stuff this one 
although it's a gel, a little bit goes a long way. This much will be enough that much. I didn't know, so at the beginning when I first got it in November, I was using so much, which is why it literally, <laughs> look, I love this stuff. It promotes hydration and it also controls your oils. Perfect, you see it just melts into the skin. Waiting allows the skincare to really absorb into the skin and do what that particular skincare will do. For example, the vitamin C to help brighten, you wanna let it dry down so it can help brighten the skin. We're feeling super plump. Last but not least is sunscreen. I've been loving this Kosar X sunscreen. This is my second bottle. You're gonna put a good amount. Although it's winter and the sun isn't out, the sun really isn't out today blend it in usually i will blend it into my neck we already know what's happening there this is the time where i let my sunscreen absorb into the skin and i'll do my eyebrows so my eyebrows will be done in three two one brows are done to create a solid base we need primers especially if you have oily skin some people love primers some people don't use primers it really is what you make of it and what you think of it if you don't like primers and your makeup slave girl do you but here we need primers I like to double prime i mix silicone base and water primers together all the time it doesn't really make a difference for me it can make a difference but for the most part it's not really like the biggest deal so we are going to press and i like to really focus all over the skin especially the pore area you want to work it in work it in so because it's thicker it does need some time to dry down i give it like three minutes i just took my vitamins oh this is gonna blur the skin this is going to stick on you can use the milk this one the other one this is really sticky the way a sticky primer is going to work is when you work it in don't rub it because that's just a mess waiting to happen and you press in it activates the stickiness i don't know exactly how but trust and believe i know what i'm talking about <laughs> this one we don't have to let it dry down as long maybe like 30 seconds see a primer always helps with longevity, helps with separating, helps with the foundation literally sticking down, which is why we're using something sticky because I have big pores, we're using something a little bit blurry. It does take a long time. There are a lot of steps to this. I know, I get it. A lot, of a lot of times we don't have all this time, but if you want a solid base that is going to last, you have to do all the skin prep in order for it to look good. If you always find something's not right, figure out what steps you're kind of like maybe rushing or not doing and maybe try it and see oh also another primer i'm going to use this primer for my under eyes this is going to help with creases I did this the other day and it worked. In the meantime, I'm prepping my base makeup. You can use whatever you like. I'm going to an event today, so I really want my base makeup to look good and it has to last all day. This one's such a good foundation. It's radiant, pigmented. It's like a gel formula. And I always like to add something skin tint or a matte foundation. I'm a mixer. If you don't mix, that's fine. Use one foundation. I usually do a pump of each. You want to always shake your foundations. I typically shake my foundations for about 10 seconds each we're going to add I of course we'll have all the shades and everything down below I like to use this brush you can use your fingers like this and I like to use this brush this brush right here is super thin we're gonna paint on in thin layers the thinner the better that way you can layer you're gonna get all over we're gonna get a little messy get in your nose all the crevices that you have i always skip the eye area because we're gonna go with concealer so we got painted on or you can just do this i typically use my hand if i'm like in a rush but because we are on our teaching era this is a it cosmetics it's nicely dense press 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 not rub this rubbing is going to create streaks it's going to move your foundation around and you don't want to waste foundation you know makeup's not cheap i don't like to get in my ears but i like to get right here I like to get down my neck again because I have that oil. I'm not gonna even bother with my neck right now. Let me go get my other mirror. Look, my friend gave me this mirror. It says gastada where the letter kind of disappeared. Ooh, all right. I wanna add a little to the areas that I know like foundation disappears. This is where you can build if you want more coverage. I always like more coverage here, my hyperpigmentation. So remember that we will add concealer. So that's gonna add another layer on. The way makeup is going to last is by layering it in thin layers. Another tip I can also say is when you add foundation, let's say like, you know how I'm adding it here, you can let it dry down 30 seconds. You will get it to 
blend nicer, it's going to get a little bit thicker and it's going to provide more coverage, especially if you're dealing with something with a thinner formula or something lightweight. Pat, pat, pat. Typically, I let my foundations dry down about three minutes. That's going to help with longevity and it's going to help the foundation stick on, adhere to your skin instead of moving all around. If you don't have three minutes, give it one minute, give it 30 seconds, give it as much time as you have. I've waited up to 20 minutes before when I do foundation wear test, 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever it is. Today, I don't have a lot of time because I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna wait like two minutes. While we wait for our foundation to dry down, let's start off with concealers. Again, I'm gonna mix these two. Letting your concealer dry the longest is gonna work. I like to add it right where the I have the darkest areas, which is literally the inner corner. You're gonna go in here and here to bring this up. So it gives this lifted effect. This will add a little bit of brightness, brightness right here on the nose, on the mouth. If your foundation covers that, you're good. Shape tape, the oldie but goodie. Add a little bit and a little bit right here. You can either use a brush to blend it out, use the same brush. Lately, because I use thicker textured concealers, I like to use a sponge because it will thin out that formula nicely. One of my favorite concealer brushes is the House Lab. It's dirty right now and I can't find it in the mess. I love that concealer brush. I would use it today, but I forgot to wash it. This part is optional for your base. I'm going to cream bronze up. This is a bronzer and it's a bronzer shade. It's gonna add nice warmth to your skin. It's gonna create a little bit of dimension. I like to do all of this at once. It just gives me a good idea how things are gonna look. You can do it separately, but it also takes a little more time. I like to add it in these areas. I'm extremely careful where I place my bronzer and my blushes. As I have a small face, you can see I don't have a lot of room to work with. Cream spread. You wanna just be careful because then you can look like a muddy mess. Trust that has happened to me time and time again and again i'm just tapping you see how it's adding a little bit of warmth to the skin and now our foundation has been dried down a good i think it's been like three minutes you're doing tapping motion it doesn't have to be neat right now it's looking a little rough now we're going to start blending that concealer at this point we've given the concealer a good amount of time to dry down i always like to work my way from the bottom up we're not rubbing we're tapping back and forth with the sponge you always want to use a clean sponge and clean clean brushes. If your brushes are dirty with one use, it's okay. But if you have a dirty, dirty brush that you've used and used for months and months, <laughs> wash it. Your makeup will apply better, smoother, non-cakey. I promise you, clean your makeup tools. And now we're still tapping, tapping. Creams are super creamy. They will always move, which is another reason why you want to create tapping motions. See, we're not blended quite, just the beginning. Again, tap. We can go back with our bronzer brush and we can just tap around. You can add more bronzer or not. It's really up to you how you want things to be, how much time you have. Makeup will always, always be a back and forth a back and forth your base makeup this is literally how your makeup's gonna sit on your skin so that's why you want to really blend out take your time with all the blending trust and believe this will make a world of a difference it takes time yes but greatness takes time I've been loving these cream blushes from elf I like to add at the top very top of my cheek because I do have a small face. This will spread rather quickly. Let's let this dry 30 seconds or so. I have this dirty brush that I really want to use. It's the e.l.f. blush brush. So I'm just going to clean it. Look at me. I'm over here talking about clean your brushes. See how I placed it here? I'm just going to keep it there. Move it back and forth a little bit, not too much. Going in steps is the best way. For me, I just feel like you can really see what's happening instead of blending it all together. You can blend it all together if you, that's how you do your your makeup that's fine everyone does their makeup very differently my goal for this video is for you to learn how to do your base once you get the hang of it you'll be the pro you'll be teaching me okay right now you want to look 
and see, are we blended? Are we looking good? I wanna add a little more concealer because you see how that blush is a little harsh? I typically do my blush before concealer, but I forgot. You want to blend this out without adding concealer. Get your foundation brush or your sponge if you use a sponge and just blend it out like that. You see how much more subtle this looks versus this side? Because we're not doing that, let's blend out here. This is where you're gonna see how things are looking. Do you like it? Do you not? The blush, I think it went away a little too much. So I'm just gonna use the brush again without adding product. Looking good. Our bronzer without adding product, just tap it in. Make sure this is looking nice and blended. Do I like it? Yes. Is everything blended? Yes. I feel like the lighting's changing a little bit. Next up is my favorite part, setting powders. I use two powders. I use Maybelline because this is a very light shade to highlight my under eyes. So we're gonna start off with that. Actually, not the lightest shade, let's use shade 10. I'm gonna get a powder puff. I have them linked on my Amazon storefront. This will blur the heck out of your skin. You want to get a good amount like this right we're gonna press it into our hand so it goes and applies on your under eyes and skin evenly you see that and it's nicely pressed in it's kind of like dough you know how you have to roll the dough up so it just adheres I feel like this is it. Now that our powder puff is nice and prepped, whatever we use, we're going to blend out. Make sure you blend out and you have no creases. Without moving your eyes, we're gonna set, press in, press in, looking up and then looking straight ahead, pressing in. So you wanna press this in each eye for about 10 seconds, just back and forth, back and forth. This way you have that nice smooth canvas. Take your time. To practice this sort of base routine, when you have time, like a day you're not working or a day you have a, the morning to yourself or the evening to yourself, practice and I promise you, practice makes perfect. There's times where I mess up. I know those times are the times that I'm rushing and that's when my stuff is looking all janky. Okay now I'm moving on to the lid. I have oily lids but my under eye area is dry. A deeper shade which is the Huda Beauty Peach Powder. This way I don't have flashback. This way my skin doesn't look too light. I love this powder. We're gonna do the same motion. I like to go like this. Set those laugh lines i don't have deep laugh lines but they're there press 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 this is going to help blur the skin make sure all the creams we put foundation concealer bronzer liquid blush does not move the crevices of your face the mouth you're like okay magdalene this is too much this is where you can end the routine well not end but this is what i'm gonna tell you to do you can add a little bit of bronzer on your lid blush and call it a day this powder blush now so this is going on top of that liquid blush bring it here at the very top of your cheek i like to move it like this this way you're bringing it up too you see you're bringing it up here same thing if blush is all you're gonna use, you could bring it here too. Blush really ties makeup together so well. Look at the difference it just did. If you have time for bronzer. Lately, I've been mixing a cool tone contour shade and this bronzer. This is the Sephora Collection bronzer in the shade light medium. I mean contour, contour, contour. Contour creates shadows to the face and it does more of a chiseled look. Bronzer gives you more warm. Yes, I did use a bronzer shade for a cream bronzer but you can use a contour shade adding very little bit just to give us that chiseled look there isn't rules to makeup either you don't have to follow this step by step like i told you my takeaway for you is that you just learn the step you could pick whatever steps you want to take and why i want to tell you the why these are the steps i take to create a flawless base i promise you game changer. I'm gonna get a bronzer shade. A bronzer, you see the difference in shade with the contour bronzer. Contour is legit gray. This is legit warm. It could be orangey, it could be red. This will add just a little bit of warmth. Top of that contour gives it a mm. I like to do tapping motions first because it places that product on and then you could buff out. Because if you start buffing out quickly, if your makeup is not set underneath, you can start moving things and that's where patches happen because you can catch like a wet spot. You see, we have a patch here. Look, here I am talking about patches. To patch up a patch, pack it on by tapping it like this. I like to put my cheeks like this to kind of follow this 
contour, shape, snatch, chiseled my own face. And this like, it just helps you measure where that goes. Powder puff again. Wow, I'm getting the wrong mirror. We're going to clean this up. Sometimes things tend to go below, my, especially my face because it's small. So this is a way to clean it up and bring it back up. This Huda Beauty powder, it's so finely milled. You see how it glides nicely? There's nothing sticking down. I like to add a little bit there, do the cleanup motion like that and like this. I use a lot of powders because I do wear my makeup for long periods and I have oily skin. So let me do my eyes really quick and I'll be back in three, two, one. Eyes all done. Now we're gonna press that powder in that we've had baking. If you don't want to bake, you don't have to. I kind of left it on a little too long, longer than I typically, but it's okay. What you're gonna do is just tap, tap, Tap it in. If you ever have straight boogies coming out, you're gonna get a Q-tip. This is the neatest way you're gonna do it without messing up your makeup. I'm just gonna tap that in. Makeup is a back and forth. You see there's that little white line because of the powder. You could just blend that out with your bronzer brush. Your blush brush, I always like to finish it off. You saw how we did all that blush. I've been loving this Sephora collection blush. It's the shade Pink Flash. A blush and a highlight. I'm gonna keep it here on this side of the cheek. I'm tapping. Can maybe add a little here, a little here. I'm not a big highlight girl, a nice subtle way. If it's too much, get your blush brush, blend all that out. Finish up the brows. Now I wanna check before I set with setting spray, I wanna make sure I don't have the patches. Everything's looking good. Something I was just thinking about right now, cream bronzer and blush is not a necessary step. It's an additional step. If you use a cream product and then a powder product of the same type, it will make your makeup last longer and it will look a little more on the defined side. Is it a big deal? No. Do I always use cream products? No. When I'm in a rush, I bypass those two, the cream bronzer and the cream blush spray some rare mist it's like a hydrating mist i really love it i think it works out so well i'm gonna press in with my sponge getting my powder puff we're going to press in like this this does something this blurness and then we're gonna seal it with milani this is a mattified setting um not powder what is this wow spray let that dry a little bit dampens up the face you can always go with your blush this will intensify the look with your powder puff press 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 in this locks your makeup in so well this trick spray and then pressing pressing's like the name of the game okay okay all done ready to conquer hold on you see there's always there's always a little something my eyelash color fell see i'm telling you i'm telling you you know things are just always layering layering so ya estoy lista pal party my mascara is tart man eater my lip is this combo la girl chocolate punchy from maybelline most importantly i really hope this makeup tutorial helped you how to do a flawless beautiful base and all the steps we took of course skin prep that's the base of the base the way you apply your products in very thin layers that's the second step of the base to make it look flawless not look cakey because a lot of times makeup looks pretty now it's the wear it's the five six hours where things can cake up especially here if you have very thick layers it just looks like a cakey mess here trust i've been there i've done that i hope also that the skin prep really helped because i've never done a skin prepped prep video for you before so let me know your thoughts let me know let me know this makeup here let's get close it's legit it's legit you see under eyes skin skin thank you so much for always requesting videos i see you guys and i hear you and i will always try my best to get to it thank you thank you so much oh and yesterday i did celebrate my one year of being a full-time content creator oh my god oh my god oh my god we're celebrating all week let me know if you're using some of these tips and tricks and let me know how it goes i always like to hear you guys' this feedback i know this video was a little bit long but i really wanted to get to the nitty gritty and the details of everything i love you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me spending a little bit of your day with me please don't forget to like subscribe click the button right there and i'll see you in the next one bye